The Jim and Terry Show, coming to you with an empty seat, held out for my good friend Jim, who will rejoin the Hobbit Hole studio with a new eye, a new eye on things, a new vision, more clarity, so we hope, more discussion. Here we are for part four of the use of lyrics to explore life, politics, economics, this time spirituality. And you can't lead once they've all been turned And you can't light what's already burned And you can't teach compassion and hope Once the hidden's all been learned It's been in the works for a couple of years now, and I'm bogged down with current social events, things that are happening that are disturbing, world uh, conflicts, global conflicts, uncertainty, uncertain economic times, and yet um, the thoughts are still going round and round that are the topic of the book. The book is called... The Grace of Uncertainty. I was going to say, I I can't remember. It's been so long. The Grace of Uncertainty. I've tried to put up a few um, podcasts about it where I talk about the topics in each section of the book as I'm going through the creative process. Um, I think I've got them all listed. You can find it under T. Wigmore on YouTube where I've used YouTube to be the repository of each section. Not sure that I will end up publishing this at all, other than maybe printing it out for myself so I got one copy of it. But it's called The Grace of Uncertainty, A Journey from Dogma into Agnosticism. And it covers my, what do they call it now? Deconverting, the process of questioning all your principal foundations from your childhood that you maintained and uh, bought into and expressed in your 20s and 30s, and then all of a sudden you find out that, hmm, I'm not so sure I can hold the cognitive dissonance anymore, the things that don't make sense, that are problematic, that got swept under the carpet of uh, growth, personal growth and dynamic and questions that remain unanswered over decades pile up into a big lump under the carpet that you can no longer ignore and say, ah, the the carpet's fine. There's no dust piled up in the corner. I'll just use the broom and sweep some more under there. No, it gets to be obvious and it gets to be sizable and you need to be able to process that stuff. The process now is called deconverting. I'm not the only one used to think that I was something special. Nobody's been down this road before. Turns out you can do your um, YouTube (laughs) question, Google, the mighty Google with the answer of, yeah, what are they? How many people? Lots. How many people are talking individually about their experiences? Lots. So people are questioning their presuppositions. The big leap of faith Everybody's, not everybody, those who are partaking on a a questioning, the inquisitive nature, the curiosity that killed the cat may have killed Christian faith or faith of any description altogether. Curiosity, where we find the leap required, the cognitive leap, the, the gap in knowledge to be filled by, I don't know how, therefore God. I don't know why, therefore God. Um, The conclusion that God fills in the gap, the God of the gap, is really the ultimate question, and most of the curiosity can be framed in those terms. God of the gaps. 
Well, I'm not so sure anymore. And the chorus of this, um, it's not the chorus, it's really the verse of the song, And You Can't, that talks about the process of questioning that stuff. And so here are the lyrics. We seem to want to find a spiritual connection to space and time, an affinity for infinity and the great beyond. Now chuck your branch onto the fire, watch it spark and come alive, embers drawn up into the night sky, twinkling, fading, and in silence fall. All right, so that's the lyric that I want to explore because it goes into a discussion and uh, recent podcast that I did see was talking about atheism and theism and the debate between the two. Theism is a belief. Atheism is a methodology. You need to get those things straight. It is not a belief system. Atheism is really the scientific method to test claims of spirituality. So if you claim Jesus is the resurrection, what is the evidence for the resurrection? If you claim Jesus was born of a virgin, what is the evidence? So it's all asking for the science. And based on what we know, it's not saying we know everything, and it's not saying there is not more to learn and to know. And the biggest one is it's not saying that knowledge is complete the way it is now, and what we know later may be greater and change what we thought we knew when, now. So calling into our own, uh, calling into question our own uh, suppositions about scientific knowledge. Yeah, you, you said, say coffee's bad for you, caffeine's lousy for you, caffeine does this, and then you find out, well, there might be some benefits, so you question your presuppositions, go back and investigate the evidence, come to new conclusions, get more evidence, come to more conclusions, reshape things, but it's all evidence-based. And evidence means you can discover it, it's testable, measurable, quantifiable, and anybody should be able to repeat the results of the experiment and get the same results. Howard did we get to the moon? How did we get the James Webb Space Telescope launched? How did we get astronauts to the International Space Station on a private space company, SpaceX? How does all of this happen? It isn't by spirituality. It isn't by um, leaping into things, therefore God. It is by measuring, quantifying, studying, examining, observing, and it's material-based. It's based on what we have around us, tangibles, things that we can see either with our eyes and with our senses or through tools that we are inventing the telescope, transform the scientific inquiry of uh, physics and astronomy, uh, magnetism, developing ways to measure and quantify it. How about the X-ray? measuring and quantifying things we cannot see, particles the size of, we used to think the atom was the smallest particle, the Atomic Energy Commission, investigating the applications of atomic energy to power generation. But then we get subatomic particles, and now we get things that are traveling at the speed of light and beyond, beyond light. How about the Large Hadron Collider? One that's going, how big is that circuit? How much wiring is used to guide particles down these tubes and off ramps and accelerate and collide with another particle, a single particle collision? How is that possible? Science is astounding, amazing. And will we go to Mars? Well, I hope so. Maybe Jim won't buy the cheap seat, but I would just to say I did. And I could, and celebrate human ingenuity. But I'm wondering when it comes time to look at things spiritual. So we have an affinity for infinity. Yeah, we like gazing out into space. And we like considering time, forward, backward, time jumping. And perhaps aliens are involved in time jumping. Maybe aliens are the future us coming back to caution us, coming back to guide us. 
I don't know about any of that stuff, but I do know the next line. Chuck your branch onto the fire. Chuck a branch, your branch. What is it that you are interested in? What is it that you are willing to explore in terms of spirituality? Because infinity is often speculative. It is not a science per se. It is a speculation. And that's why people of faith are prone to speculation, prone to exploring things that are open-ended, that have no resolution, no hope of being quantified, no hope of being understood in a way that is concrete and measurable. Yeah, we have near-death experiences that we could quantify, but we can't. We can measure the number of them. We can write narratives about them, but we don't have a camera on the person as they are in the near-death experience, and we have no idea of how to verify their experience. We can just record what they said about the experience. So that's as close as we can get into staring into the great beyond, unless you're a person of faith and you believe that the tombs, the stone was rolled away and that Jesus is resurrected. Uh, but again, what is the scientific evidence? What is the evidence for these things? These are claims. And that's part of what this whole part of the song is exploring. So chuck your branch, whatever faith tradition you have chosen to explore at the moment. And that might be not a traditional religion, but maybe a spiritual pursuit. Maybe it's open-ended. So you throw your belief onto the fire. Fire is always used as a symbol of purging. Something gets hot. That which burns away is the dross, and that which remains is gold and of value. So chuck it on. Watch it spark. Yeah, there's going to be a light show. There's going to be something, whether it's a political spectrum like a Trump rally or it's some other kind of thing. Oh, to just see that, you know, the, all the research coming out on mushrooms, all the research on psychedelics, and yeah, sparks will come. It looks like the branch is coming alive. But there are so many claims that go up into the sky. They twinkle for a while, then they fade. And the key line is the last line. And in silence, fall. They disappear. The end of the world as we know it. How many times have you heard that? Well, it's getting closer, the red heifer. Uh, yeah, the temple's being built. Yeah, they're sowing the priestly garbs. The Levites. Okay, how long? Silence is the test when things fall silent. Hmm, really? You thought Y2K. You thought 2008. You thought 2012. You thought silence. The Jim and Terry Show. Bye-bye.